Listen now as some people share how they felt when they experienced a loss of some sort that caused them grief. Um, my name's Laura. Um, I am a mother of four, and my husband passed away uh, three years ago, August, and um, he had Lou Gehrig's disease, which is a nervous system disease that affects your whole body. It starts with um, a limb, and then it moves on to other limbs until eventually your lungs, because it's a, a muscle. It's, it's unable to um, function, and that's how um, he passed away. My name is Jonathan Stroud, and um, three years ago, I was laying hardwood floor and I had an accident with a table saw and it um, pretty much almost took my hand completely off and I've been through 12 surgeries uh, just trying to get my hand back but this is what I got. So my name is Howard Maddox, I'm from Southern California. I grew up kind of in a rough and tumble neighborhood a little bit of gang activity involved and um, you know worked hard and tried to stay clean and didn't get involved in that activity but often ran into uh, the trouble that came my way and by the time I was 21 had been involved in you know sports and martial arts and was pretty much a tough guy but um, you know you can't really anticipate what life will bring you so at one point um, I was out with a girlfriend uh, doing what people do at you know hanging out at 1030 at night and said let's go hang out at this park and so uh, a man jumped in my truck it was a 95 Chevy S10 I guess it looked new enough he thought I had money and he jumped in the truck and uh, came up against me and you know throttled my uh, my my the front of my shirt and I didn't see a gun and he said uh, give me your money I fought him I got him out of the truck and then by the time I had him by his throat, he did have a gun. And um, he, um, um, let's see, he was diagnosed um, or started having symptoms in 2008, um, February or March of 2008, he started to have symptoms and we didn't know what it was. We actually thought it was um, a nervous, like a disc out or a back problem because he was doing a uh, postal work for um, the post office and so we thought he was just having some kind of nervous system problem and then um, he uh, was diagnosed in 2008 and then um, he started having severe symptoms and that he wasn't able to work by the end of July um, and then he um, started he went from a progression of using a cane to a, a walker to wheelchair and uh, the whole process lasted about a year and a half. He passed away in 2009, August 13, 2009. Uh, we have, like I said, we had four children together, and so um, our grief process was, my grief process was not just my own, it was also my children as well. When Initially when my hand got, went through the table saw, it was kind of, it was kind of a scary moment, and then obviously like seeing my hand split open and, um, I was alone, so I had to, you know, find some help as quickly as possible. And um, so I just ran out in the street and just started yelling as loud as I could. And uh, just my, my, just my, I guess I was just kind of in survival mode, like in my mind, I was like, I got to get help. And he pulled the trigger, and the bullet hit my jaw, jugular vein, carotid artery, C67, and. Um, I was one of those miracles because I should have died and I didn't. And uh, three months in the hospital, three months at uh, physical therapy at Loma Linda University Medical Center in Southern California. And then it's been about 17 years and I've had um, a lot of transitions. For me, the hardest part was the process. It was harder than even actually after he passed away because you're having to grieve each step. You have to grieve when there's no longer loss of your legs. There's no longer loss of your hands. I mean, it gets so warped that I was actually jealous of people that were just paralyzed from the waist down because they could actually function. You know, once you start losing your arms and your legs, you can't function anymore. So yeah, it was just very, so each step was another grieving process. Each time you lost um, motion, each time you lost mobility, you had to grieve that again and readjust to it until eventually being on a um, respiratory uh, device that he had to be on 24-7 all the time. 
and um, it was very, it was, you know, you had to be up all night, you had to be up all day. We had um, very little outside help. The realization that my hand, you know, just after what the doctors are saying that, you know, just for the first even two weeks, my the palm of my hand was dying, just kept turning black and um, they were cutting more and more tissue and muscle out of it. And eventually they're like, if this is gonna keep going, we're gonna have to just take the hand off. Like, we, we can't keep, it, it can't stay like this because it could, it could really be um, harmful to yourself. So, you know, with that coming, coming into my, my spirit and my mind, just like, wow, this is really actually more serious than I had ever really thought. And uh, so I just like, I just remember really being bummed, like starting to be bummed out a lot. Like I, I remember just breaking down crying and just different things like that. Like um, it was hard. It's hard to even imagine the processes of thoughts that I would have all the time. My husband was very um, strong and he didn't want to do any medication. So it was very, um, it was really hard because he'd be up every single day um, throughout the whole process. And so you were constantly physically, you know, doing a lot. So I'd say as part of the group process too, there was a level of uh, relief um, even at the end because there was so much work involved in trying to keep him functioning and trying to keep him alive that um, yeah, you kind of deal with different aspects of both great relief and um, deep sadness. So, As these people can attest, grief stems from many different types of experiences and loss. And while each person's experience is unique, there's some common forms and stages of grief that are helpful to know about as we support and work with those experiencing grief and loss. Let's turn now to the topic of these stages of grief and how they manifest themselves in people's experiences and reactions. 